Ah, Payload, one of the newest modes added to Brawl Stars. It's pretty janky, not gonna lie. I'm gonna give you all the tips you need to succeed in this mode, and I'm here with none other than Z Replays to help me out. It's possible the mode gets changed in the future to where you can hit through the payload, which is a pretty big change, and some of these tips rely on the fact that the payload is a wall. So if that change does ever happen, then those specific tips won't really apply. But 90% of the tips in this video still probably will. So make sure you stick around for every single one of them. More people standing on the payload doesn't make it go faster. So it's ideal to have just one person move it while the other two break off and engage the enemy. We can call this player the payload mover or the pusher. And their main focus would be to get the payload moving as soon as possible. Now at the beginning of the match, brawlers that can stand far away when the payload's far away from the center of the map and just throw attacks in like throwers, you know, Barley, Dynamite, are all going to be good payload movers at the start of the match. But when the payload gets to your opponent's side and you're sort of in the enemy territory, and you're just trying to get the payload through that portion, having a brawler like a tank, someone who can tank a lot of hits or just dance around the wall really easily, and who can apply a lot of pressure just by being there with a lot of DPS are gonna be good payload movers for that middle portion of the match on a lot of the maps where the payload is on the enemy's side of the field. And then you can go back to a thrower or something to move the payload at the end of the match. Don't rush the enemy payload together. Attack it from multiple directions. Payload maps are pretty small and the walls, bushes, etc. can make it even smaller. This means splash damage brawlers like Penny and Ems and choke point brawlers like Jesse are gonna have a field day if you stick together a lot. Attacking from multiple directions also means you'll be breaking your enemy's focus from pushing the load to attacking you. One of the easiest ways to get people off their payload and maybe give your team a little bit of an edge is just by spamming a bunch of pushback and pull abilities to just displace your opponents from where they want to be. So those sort of abilities, you want to use them as much as you can throughout the match. Even when you can't seem to hit them, just standing on the enemy's payload on the opposite side of them will shield you from cover and keep you alive, while slowing down their progress significantly at the same time. Your team can slowly obtain an advantage this way, just remember not to forget about your own payload in the process. There are also a lot of mistakes that people seem to make when playing this mode because it's not exactly clear how the payloads function. You sort of have to learn by playing it. And so here are just some things to keep in mind. If you're ever trying to block enemies from reaching their payload, maybe it's towards the end of the game, they only need 20 more percent to win. And so you gotta play really defensive and make sure that they can't get any more percentage on that payload. Don't just stand on it because that's not gonna really stop them from doing anything. You wanna push up forward and get as close to their spawn as you can without being in danger. So that way you have as much time as possible as they're coming towards the payload to deal damage to them and try to take them out. Get the payload moving as the game starts. The mode ends quickly because each path is very short. Usually the fighting begins once the two teams reach the midpoint of their paths, so if one team isn't there at the midpoint to stop the other, the other team is going to have a clear advantage in terms of progress. So the beginning portion of the track is important because if you get to that enemy territory first, it's gonna force the opponents to defend because they can't just let you get that portion of the track for free since it's the hardest. So that's why you really wanna to get to that part quick. If you get knocked back by your own payload, you will not make progress for the brief moment of time you are immobile. This can cost you a lead, especially at the beginning of the game when it's perfectly even. But you can only get knocked back if you stand directly in the cart's path. So get in the habit of staying on the sides of the payload and always be aware of when the payload is gonna make a turn so you don't get caught off guard. And if you ever have an attack that forces you to stand in place like Frank Super or Meg going into her mecha, don't do that right in front of a payload because that will also knock you out of your attack. You're gonna completely lose it. Not a good idea. A lot of the time in this mode, everyone's just gonna be clumped around the payload. And so brawlers with a large area of effect are generally gonna be pretty good. But then at the same time, brawlers that counter brawlers with a large area of effect are also gonna be good. So you generally want to bring a diverse mix of brawlers. You don't wanna run like all throwers because then if they run a thrower counter, you're kinda of screwed. If you run all tanks and they run a tank counter, you're kinda of screwed. So generally, I think it's pretty good if you go with like a thrower, a tank, and then some sort of damage dealer. The tank can help push the payload in a lot of those aggressive situations. The thrower can just have damage from wherever since he completely ignores all of the walls on the map. And then the damage dealer just tries to do as much damage, get as many kills as possible while everyone else is sort of doing their job and moving the payload forward. It also helps if the damage dealer is pretty tanky, like Ash, Frank, etc., as they will likely need to get close in order to hit opponents that may clump up behind their payload or just to stall the opponent when the other tank dies. Long-range brawlers struggle to do a lot since many of the maps are filled with walls and, of course, the payload. 
Gale's another amazing damage dealer because he's super solid in the meta right now and he stuns people when they hit a wall. And when you have a giant moving wall across the field, people are always going to be standing next to walls. So it's very easy to get value out of his super and stun people and stunning is exactly what you need for the rest of your team to come in and pick up the kill or just you by yourself because Gale also has a ton of DPS. Any brawler that can ignore unbreakable walls is going to be inherently buffed in this mode because you can hit people through the payload. For example, Jackie's attack and super, or Ems's acid spray and super, and also jump teleport mechanics and area damage brawlers like throwers. And the most important tip is to subscribe to the channel. So you know when I post more guide videos like this and go check out Z Replays as well. He posts some amazing Brawl Stars videos, pretty similar to my content. If you like what I do, you'll probably like what he does as well. So go check him out. Thanks for watching.